All right, we're running. Assalamualaikum, everyone. My name is Natasha, and I'm the host of Sham Ki Jai, where I interview Pakistanis doing really cool things. We have this new segment that um, I'm filming, and it's called Chai Chats, where I interview virtually Pakistani from anywhere in the world, and we dive deep on a specific topic. And I'm very excited today to have Usman and Jaz on the show. Hi, Usman. Assalamualaikum. I'm Islam. How you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you so much. Um, I have sort of been on your show on the Salam Nerds podcast <laughs> and a lot of the stuff that you do with Neves, but today our topic is going to be something that's top of mind for everyone, and that is politics, specifically Muslim representation in politics, uh, why it's important to understand people that um, people that are running at a local level, at a national level, and I, I kind of want to get into something that you started. It's called MUPAC. And so let's start with that. Tell me what it is. Tell me why you started it and what, what you're trying to do with it. Right. So obviously we all know what's going on in the Middle East. And then yes. in December, I was the guy who wrote the first state party ceasefire resolution that got passed. Okay. Um, now, for people that don't know, there isn't just one Democratic Party. There's a national party, 50 state parties, and then like 4,000 county parties. Oh, and okay. so, yeah, right. So there are like different levels and chapters of each of them. Okay. And so at the state level in Texas, where I'm based, I wrote our mm. state party ceasefire resolution, and we got that passed unanimously. We were the first ones to do it. Nice. That got passed on December 2nd. And then after that, I was like, you know what? I got to be able to do this nationwide. And so I created the Muslims United Political Action Committee, MUPAC. And ever since then, we've just been getting involved everywhere, raising money for good candidates, le legally bribing them to make sure they pass our policies. And well, here we are. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, thank you so much for going into that. And I wanna talk about some candidates that you have top of mind. As I said, this, this segment dives deep into one specific topic. And so I wanna go through three candidates very specifically, um, where, who they are, what they stand for, why you guys are supporting them, and what people should know. So let's start with candidate number one. Who do you want to talk about? Jamal Bowman. Okay, Jamal tell me about Bowman, Jamal Bowman. Yeah, he's running for New York's 16th Congressional District. Okay. He was one of the eight original people who called for a ceasefire like within days of October 7th. Um, the problem is now is that APAC is going after him very hard. Uh, mm. Jamal, honestly, aside from just Palestine, he's been great on climate change, workers' rights. Like, I can go on and on. He is a progressive champion, and he represents the community very well. The problem is um, APAC is getting heavily involved in that race. They're throwing several million dollars against him. Um, his election, his primary election, is June 22nd. So June twenty second, you guys. Yeah, and for your listeners in New York, especially if you're like living in Westchester County or the Bronx, Yonkers, that area, please go vote for Jamal Bowman by on uh, June twenty second, or ideally during early vote, because that will help their campaign kind of gauge where they need to put more resources, which neighborhoods they need to target more. So if you can vote early, that would be ideal. What is the early vote? Can you I explain actually do that not quickly? Know that. <laughs> Okay. Uh, all right. No worries. Well, so let me explain what it is, right? Um, election day is June twenty second for the primary, right? A lot. Most people go on election day because that's you know the big day you're supposed to vote. Uh, early voting is designed so that in the week or two weeks before it, I'm not exactly sure what New York's laws are on early voting, but usually it's two weeks before election day where you can go vote anyways, and okay. this allows people like let's say you're busy on that Tuesday, you know you're traveling your kids are having graduation because it's graduation season, right? You have a two week window to go vote. So okay. please utilize that because you have no excuse at that point. All right, awesome. Jamal Bowman, New York, District 16. 16. Yeah, District 16. Where can we find him online and read more about his policies? Oh my God. I mean, if you just search Jamal Bowman, J-A-M-A-A-L, last name b-o-w-m-a-n you can find him on every social media platform Everywhere. he is on website we, everything we will link him um post editing we will link him right here when you're talking about him um so that folks can can see his name and, and go find him right thank you for that next candidate candidate number two corey bush okay she is also another one of those 
original eight ceasefire candidates. Um, you know, she signed the first ceasefire. Actually, I think she's the one who authored the resolution that Rashida Tlaib and all of them signed on to. I think she's the primary okay. author, actually. Uh, okay. APEC is going after her, of course, because she wrote the damn thing and people don't like her because of it. So this election is happening August 8th. August now, 8th. In the past few months, there have been polls that came out that show she's down. Um, I'm going to give you something that nobody else knows about yet. Um, there's a poll coming out this week that's going to show her up by 12 points. Nice. Yeah. So that, well, I don't know if it's going to come out this week, but it's going to come out soon. I know the polling okay. was done and I know what the results are, but mm -hmm. she's doing decently well in her district now. Now, the problem is when it comes to polls, and I know people have opinions about it, but here's my opinion. If somebody is up or down 20 points in a poll, I don't consider it something to really gauge an election with. And here's why. In a plus minus, you know, 20 poll, uh, according to 538, their polls have only been 54% accurate, which is slightly oh. better than a coin toss. Yeah, pretty but, much. You might as well so, have the octopus decide. Exactly right. And so yeah. now, of course, on the flip side, if it's greater than 20 points, it's a 99% accuracy. But, you know, obviously, yeah. that's not what we're going to get in a competitive race like this one. And no. so in this competitive race, because it's less than 20 points, it's a 12 point difference right now. I don't know how it's going to turn out. Um, in the past, she snuck by also in the past. Um, in 2022, there was a poll that said she only got 28% of the vote, but she ended up okay. winning. So okay. there is some historical precedence that even though she polls low, she can still win and do a great job. Uh, okay. But Jamal Bowman and Cori Bush are Apex top two targets right now from the progressive side of it, only mm -hmm. because they were the first to call for a ceasefire. Got it. So next up, that was Cori Bush, August 8th, August 7th? August 8th. August 8th. Okay. Cori Bush, August 8th. And final candidate to keep top of mind. Well, real quick before that, um, August 8th is also the day for Michigan's congressional primary. So if you're okay. a man of Rashida Taleb and you're in Michigan, yeah, go vote for her too, uh, August 8th. Yeah. Okay, the last candidate. Um, this one is interesting because California has something called a jungle primary. Okay. And in a traditional primary, like where I'm located in Texas, right, you have various political parties. And if you have people running for that political party seat on the ballot, mm -hmm. they have a primary. So they can select between, you know, from the two or three Democrats, which Democrat is going to be our champion, from the Republicans, which of the two or three, which Republican will be the champion. And so you narrow it down in a primary to get one from each party, and then you go on the ballot. California is a little different where you have something called a jungle primary, where in the primary that happened on March 5th, it was the top two vote getters across all parties who advanced to the general election. Okay. And that will happen November 8th. Um, there's a district out in Los Angeles. Um, if your listeners have heard of David Kim, he's David a Kim. fantastic guy. Yeah, David Kim. There's also a guy named David Min in North Cal. Um, mm. He's in Not 47. Him. David Kim's in 34, I think, in California. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. D but David Kim is Los Angeles County. I know that for a fact. And this race, it's not like Republican versus Democrat or anything. No, like in this race, it's two Democrats on your November ballot. I see. Okay. Yeah. And so David Kim is the, you know, anti APAC candidate. Uh, okay. Jimmy Gomez is being supported by APAC. And okay. so David Kim actually needs a lot of help because California elections are really low turnout, surprisingly. And mm. they're not generating enough buzz because everyone always assumes that, oh, it's California. They'll have a Democrat. That's fine. Yeah. But having yeah. a Democrat, I mean, I've, you've seen what's happened over the past few years. Doesn't like, matter. Months. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You yeah. need the right Democrat. Um, yes. And so David Kim will be running for California's 34th seat, I believe. Uh, his election, his primary already happened. So we're not worried about that now. But his general election, it will be against Jimmy Gomez. And David Kim's amazing, by the way. If you get a chance to meet him, please do. I will personally be in LA sometime in the next few months on the ground okay. helping him organize. Uh, okay. But that is another race to keep in mind. So there are a lot of people who are mad at Joe Biden. I am too. But that doesn't mean we give up on every single Democrat, especially the pro CSR Democrats who stuck their neck out for us. Because yeah. if they don't get reelected, guess what? 
we're sending a message that Palestine doesn't matter politically, mm. right? We have to get our pro ceasefire people elected. Otherwise, APAC will just be like, oh yeah. Or every political candidate will be like, I don't care. Like these people don't vote. They don't raise money for us. APAC is doing that. Why should we care about what they have to say? Right. If you want yeah. your voice to be heard, I mean, politicians care about two things, money and votes. So sure. you can go vote or you can give MUPAC money so I can give them money and get things done. There you go. Last call to action. Give MUPAC money. All Thank right. you, Asman. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Asman, for taking the time. We really appreciate it. Anytime. Yeah. Oh, and uh, have and fun. <laughs> Uh, yes, have fun. And thank you guys for watching. This was a really important episode. Uh, as always, thank you for your support. Thank you for the time that you spend watching the show and the segment. Inshallah, I will be back with another episode. Until then, Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz.